Hey, Apple fans, Apple Sheep, and anyone else watching, Richard here with iTalk. This is our preview of Apple's November event, and it's all coming up right after the intro. This is iTalk. You know, 2020 has been a really crazy year like no other for a very long time that, well, at least I can remember. But before we get into the video, I just need to briefly start with a more serious topic. As a physician, I have to just mention COVID-19. It's challenged us to rethink everything we do, how we do it, where we do it, and when we do it. It's reshaped how we work, how we play, how we socialize, and just how we live. It's even reshaped how Apple does its events. It has undoubtedly reshaped our entire society and, in fact, our world. And more seriously and sadly and tragically, COVID-19 has taken 1.2 million lives worldwide, including now currently almost 240,000 American lives. We must never forget or lose sight of the pain so many families are experiencing. And not only the pain of losing loved ones, but losing jobs, financial stability, and just the sheer stress this pandemic has heaped upon us. So as a physician, I would really be remiss if I didn't just mention this and just remind everyone, please wear a mask in public, if not to protect yourself, but to protect others around you who may be at higher risk of developing severe COVID disease. Now back to the topic of this video. So this is the fourth Apple event of the year, a very unusual thing in a very unusual year. The first one, WWDC, where we heard Tim Cook make the announcement of the move from Intel to Apple's own processor, Apple Silicon. Next, we had Apple's September event, which really focused primarily on Apple Watch Series 6 and the new iPad Air redesign. And then at the much anticipated October event, or more commonly known as the iPhone event, Apple introduced the four brand new iPhone models, the iPhone 12, the 12 mini, the 12 Pro, and the 12 Pro Max. And personally, I can't wait to get my hands on the new iPhone 12 Pro Max, but that's an entirely different video. So now let's get into the Apple November event dubbed One More Thing, coined famously by the late Steve Jobs. It's slated to broadcast this Tuesday, November 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and I have to say, I am super excited. But before we get into Apple Silicon, the November event probably would have been better titled Two More Things. It's expected that Apple's AirTags will be announced at the November event as well. So we all know that Apple has been working on these miniature Bluetooth tracking devices designed to be attached to items like keys and wallets, briefcases and backpacks, really anything you want to track. These are tile-like devices that are used with the Find My app. AirTags were merely rumor until April of this year when it was apparently accidentally confirmed by Apple as a feature in an official Apple product video showing it supported in the Find My iPhone user interface. So how do they work? AirTags will have a built-in chip that allows them to connect to an iPhone, relaying by GPS the position of devices that they're attached to. Since they're used with the Find My app, they can be used pretty much with any Apple device, an iPhone, iPad, or Mac to track things that are important or valuable or both should they be lost or stolen. They're rumored to be physically shaped like a small cylinder, likely in white, though I would like to maybe see a space gray option. According to famed Apple leaker John Prosser, or if you're Tim Cook, infamous Apple leaker John Prosser, AirTags will be pretty small, a tad larger than a bottle cap. They're also rumored to come with a keychain that has a small leather pouch on it to accommodate the air tags. This also according to John Prosser. Other leakers such as Love to Dream are suggesting that air tags may be available in two sizes, large and small, though it's really unclear what those sizes would actually be. So what happens if you lose something with an air tag attached to it? First, you'll get a notification on your iPhone. Once you get that notification, you'll then be able to tap a button in the Find My app that causes the AirTag to screech out a rather loud chime so that you can locate a nearby lost item. If your lost item isn't nearby and can't be located, you can put it in lost mode. 
In this mode, if another iPhone user comes across the item, they'll be able to see your contact information so they can send you a text or call you to let you know that the item has been found. Not only this, but you'll also receive a notification as soon as an iPhone comes across your lost item. This feature lets any iPhone detect a lost item and was added with iOS 13. And with the introduction of Apple's U1 Ultra Wideband chip, AirTags should be extremely precise in locating items. They also have a removable and changeable CR2032 button battery. Now again, as a physician, and in particular as a pediatrician, I just want to remind viewers that these small button batteries can be extremely dangerous for small children if they swallow them. So if you have any button batteries, just please make sure they're stored where children cannot get to them. As far as stolen items go, I'm really not sure how AirTags are going to help because if somebody stole it and it chimes all over the place, or they get an iPhone notification with your contact information, I sincerely doubt that they're going to call to let you know that they found it. So I think it's probably going to work more for lost items in the hope that somebody honest finds them. But still, I'm kind of excited about them, and depending on how much they cost, I'll probably try one. That's it for AirTags. Now on to the main event, the one more thing. And it's no secret what that one more thing is. It is the much anticipated announcement of the Apple Silicon Mac lineup. Which Macs will get the highly touted Apple Silicon processors? What will these new processors be like? How fast will they be? So according to 9to5Mac, there are rumors of a revamped 12-inch MacBook, as well as the 13-inch MacBook Pro getting the new processor. There are a few rumors that there may be a redesigned smaller version of the iMac with Apple Silicon dumping the 21 and a half inch screen for a larger 24 inch screen in the smaller model at the November event, but I don't know if I would count on that. 9to5Mac also reports from the China Times that there will be three A14 variants. Two of these variants are reportedly for Apple Silicon Macs. The A14X chip is supposedly for the next iteration of the iPad Pro and the new MacBooks. Whether that's the 12-inch base model or the 13-inch Pro model is yet to be determined. The A14X is a much more power-efficient processor with an expected 15 to 20-hour battery life, which would really be amazing. I mean, an iPad or laptop with 15 to 20 hours of battery life would pretty much guarantee all-day performance without having to worry about recharging. The second Apple Silicon variant for Macs is reportedly the A14, which is for iMacs and the Mac Pro. Codename Mount Jade. Finally, 9to5Mac is reporting the first fully Apple in-house developed GPU, codename LaFuca, to be introduced sometime next year in 2021. According to Apple Track, Mark Gurman, Apple leak connoisseur with a current 88.3% leak accuracy, is reporting Apple Silicon for the 13-inch MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, with all of these supposedly getting Apple Silicon at the November event. None of these are expected to get major physical redesign changes, but then again, how much can you do with a laptop as far as physical design goes? Apple Track is also reporting according to Love to Dream with an 88.5% accuracy. Apple Silicon is coming to the 13-inch MacBook Air as well as the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but not yet to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Mac Rumors is also reporting that MacBooks will not have significant design changes announced at the November event either. They are reporting that newly redesigned 14.1-inch and 16.1-inch MacBook Pros with mini LEDs are expected sometime in 2021. Significant design changes, thank God, for the iMac as well as the Mac Pro are expected pretty much by everyone in 2021. There are also rumors that the new Mac Pro will be much smaller, with about half the footprint of the current model. Whether this is a replacement for the current Mac Pro or an additional Mac Pro model is not yet known. And aside from what I've talked about regarding iMac, there are very few indications of Apple Silicon for the iMac at the November event. That's really much more expected in 2021. Remember, Tim Cook announced that the transition from Intel to Apple Silicon would be about a two-year process. That being said, there are at least some little hints possibly, and I stress possibly, pointing toward a smaller version iMac with Apple Silicon sooner than later. 
According to Apple's website, the mid-level 3.6 gigahertz quad core and the upper level 3.0 gigahertz six core 21 and a half inch iMacs aren't shipping until between December 3rd and December 10th. The base model entry level 2.3 gigahertz still ships between November 11th and November 13th. Does this suggest that the 21 and a half inch iMac is running low on stock and Apple is only building new 21 and a half inch iMacs as they are ordered on demand? And if that's the case, there's really only one explanation. Either the new 21 and a half inch iMac has Apple Silicon or they're dumping the 21 and a half inch iMac for a 24 inch iMac model. As far as Apple Silicon in general, personally, I think this is not only going to be a game changer for Apple, but for the entire personal computer industry as a whole. I think you're gonna see more computer makers trying to develop their own in-house chips, and not just for cost-saving purposes, but to be able to control their entire ecosystems and have processors that are specifically designed for their ecosystems. Not only that, but these ARM-based chips are going to be much more powerful and much more energy efficient with much better thermals, a lot less throttling, and significantly improved battery life. I really get the feeling that x86 processors are headed down the road of the 8-track. And for you younger generation who don't know what an 8-track is, they're headed down the road of CDs or DVDs or whatever. And even though I did just buy the new 2020 Intel iMac 27 inch, I am really excited for Apple Silicon. I bought the new 27 inch Intel iMac for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, I really needed a new desktop now. And I didn't wanna wait until what I think is going to be next year for at least the larger iMac to get Apple Silicon. Second, I really didn't want a first generation Apple Silicon iMac. I wanna wait for at least second generation, if not third generation, for Apple to work out all the bugs. I figure the 2020 Intel iMac will get me at least two years. So what are my predictions? I think based on the two year timeline, the November event is going to announce Apple Silicon for the base MacBook, whether that's in the form of a new 12 inch MacBook or some other form of entry level MacBook remains to be seen. It's gonna be coming to the 13 inch MacBook Pro and possibly a smaller size iMac and whether that's a 21 and a half inch or a 24 inch is yet to be seen. I don't think it's going to be 21 and a half inch and I think it's more likely to be a redesigned 24 inch iMac if Apple announces Apple Silicon for any iMac at the November event. I don't think Apple Silicon is coming to the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the pro level iMac such as the larger iMac or the Mac Pro. And I think 2020 is going to be the last year for the iMac Pro. Finally, I am really excited for this event and I'm super excited about the transition from Intel to in-house designed and developed Apple Silicon for Mac computers. And I can't wait to see what Tim Cook and Apple have to announce in a couple of days. I'm also really curious to see what AirTags are all about and to get more details on exactly what they are, what they look like, how they work, and how much they cost. So that's it. What do you think? What do you think Apple is going to announce? Which iMacs are getting Apple Silicon now? And what's in store for the future of the transition to Apple Silicon? Are you excited? Or are you worried about the potential drawbacks, such as not likely being able to run Windows on Mac? What do you think it's going to mean long term for Apple, for the entire computer industry as a whole? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss an iTalk video. Thanks so much for watching. This is Richard with iTalk, and I'll catch you on the flip side. We are out. <sighs> The Seppin, 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 so what is a Seppin? Is that English? Or something? I don't know. Is that English? <laughs> the Seppin. The se <laughs> I don't know if it's any language. I know a lot of Spanish. I know some French. That don't sound like Spanish or French. No, it doesn't. It might be something on Star Wars or something. You know what, that could be. Or Harry Potter. Maybe. Cut!